What's going on everybody? Charge it up here in the garage with the R6. For today's video, how to remove the front wheel. Let's go. All right guys, so we'll use the same scenario for the front wheel as we did last week for the rear tire. Let's just say we are removing the front wheel to take it to a shop for them to replace the tire. There's a scenario, let's get at it. Now, because I have axle sliders on my front axle, my step number one will be to remove the axle sliders. Step number two, we're gonna grab our size 32 socket. Yep, 32, same as the rear. We're gonna grab our breaker bar. We're gonna go ahead and loosen our axle nut. Nice and loose, we'll leave that the way it is. For now, let's move on to the next step. Step number three, we're gonna go ahead and raise the front of the bike up. I'm gonna be using my blue jack right here, which is gonna go right under the exhaust right there. And then I've got my wooden block with a rag around it. Obviously you can use your front lift depending on how you're using it. Once again, I've got the luxury of actually using a lift and not having to do it on the ground. Let's go ahead and lift the bike up. Step number four, we're gonna go ahead and remove both calipers from each side. Unfortunately, you cannot remove the front wheel without removing the two calipers. They do get in the way of the rim as you're trying to pull the front wheel out through the front. It wouldn't even matter if you dropped your, the wheel down the calipers would still get in the way of the rim. Let's go ahead and remove both calipers. I do have previous videos about cleaning your calipers. Just a quick reminder how to remove the calipers. One bolt there, one bolt there, and then this guy right over here, and the caliper comes out this way. Let's go ahead and remove both and we'll come back. Now after removing the caliper, you wanna put a rag around it just so it doesn't scratch up anything around this area. In hindsight, you could just remove the two calipers before lifting the bike up in the air so your front wheel isn't actually moving back and forth, back and forth like mine was when I was taking it off. Step number five, guys, we're gonna go ahead and now loosen the pinch bolts. There are four pinch bolts total, two on each side. Let's go ahead and loosen these guys up. You don't have to take these guys out far. I like to take them out far enough just so you don't reach any sort of resistance. Go ahead and do the other side as well. All right, pinch bolts are loose. Step number six, we're gonna go ahead and now remove the axle nut and put that aside. And now we're going to remove the axle. We're just gonna go ahead and use our thumb and push this through. Once we do push it through, it'll give us some space on this side to actually grab it and pull it out. Now we've got some space. We're gonna go ahead and just pull that guy out just that easy. There's literally no grease on this thing whatsoever. We'll change that for when we install it. All right, step number seven. Now the wheel is loose, we're gonna go ahead and just roll the wheel right out. Now in some occasions, you will have to raise the bike up a tiny bit to get the wheel out if you're on a lift, or most of the time when you're using a front wheel stand on the floor, you should have enough space for when the wheel drops down and then be able to pull it out. So there shouldn't be any issue there. There is some nice amount of road dust on that spacer. So we'll go ahead and clean that in a second. Take the spacers out. So step number eight, we're gonna go ahead and take the two spacers out. We don't want the spacers going to the shop, obviously when you're sending it to them, because uh, for the most part, they don't need them to either change the tire or to balance them. It's better to just keep them at home and you know exactly where they are. Step number nine, at this point, because you have the wheel completely out, I mean, why not go ahead and go around and clean the rotors? I'm gonna do both sides and then clean the spacers as well. All right guys, so let's just say that the wheel is sent off to the shop and you've got your bike like so. This is actually a really good time to take a look at your calipers and your brake pads. I recently did a video on how to clean your calipers, so everything is actually pretty clean. I'm surprised after putting another thousand kilometers on it or so. Super happy with that, that it's still nice and clean. But definitely a good time to take a look and obviously to inspect your brake pads to see how things are going there. Okay, let's say now the wheel is back from the shop. Brand new tire, you're ready to put the wheel back on. With the front wheel, how can you tell which side goes to which side? Now there's three ways that you can tell. Number one, you can use the rotational direction on the tire. In this case, it's showing this way. That would be incorrect. Now, why this isn't a 100% telltale of which way to go? Well, sometimes shops like to use temps or apprentices or guys that are just part-time and not really mechanics to change tires just to make things go quicker. They sometimes put the tires on backwards and I've seen this numerous times. I've been at a shop where it's happened. I have personally put tires on backwards because you're rushing. It's just the nature of the business. So that's actually not a 100% way of knowing how to put back the wheel. Second way is when you're taking off the wheel, you mark it. You mark it with like a China marker that this is this side and that is that side. That also could backfire because you never know what could happen when you take the wheel to the shop. They could clean it up and then the China marker is gone and you can't tell 
which way to put it back on. Now the third way and the 100% way of knowing is by taking a look at the speedometer. Here's the speedo sensor right here. And as you can tell right now, there's nothing for it to actually read on this side. So if I turn this back the other way, here's the reading that it takes and then it shows you the speed that you're doing. I, for the most part, and don't get me wrong, it varies from bike to bike, but I, for the most part, use the Speedo to gauge how the wheel goes back on the bike, especially on our sixes. All right, time to reinstall the wheel. We're gonna go ahead and grab our nice and clean spacers, put them back in their place, slowly push these back into place there we go now as i mentioned previously this is bone dry there's absolutely no grease on the front axle i personally like putting grease on the axles it just makes it a lot easier for the next time that you do have to take it off and uh yeah i'm actually just a little weird like there was literally absolutely no grease on the front axle coming from factory all right the axle is nice and greased as you can see i've got my wheel nice and lined up because i was able to lower the bike to line it up perfectly so i can literally take the axle and put it right into the hole. All right, we're gonna grab our axle nut. We're gonna go ahead and put that on hand tight. I'm just, I'm just doing a hand tight for now, just to pull the axle forward. We're gonna grab our size six Allen. We're gonna go ahead and now tighten the pinch bolts. Our pitch bolts are nice and tight. Now that the pitch bolts are back on, we're gonna go ahead and now reinstall the calipers. So we're actually just make, gonna make sure that the brake pads are in the right spot. We're gonna go ahead and line it up with the rotor. And as we do that, we're gonna just slide it in nicely and then put it in its place. Let's grab the two bolts. One, two. So there's one thing that I do like doing when it comes to the actual calipers. I leave the bolts actually fairly loose. What I like doing is this. I'm gonna go ahead and actually spin the wheel and hit the front brake. I'm gonna hit the front brake. This seats the brake pads to the rotors. And now that I'm holding it, I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna tighten them down. As I'm holding the brake, I'm gonna tighten it down. I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the other side as well. But that's how I actually like doing the caliper bolts uh, on the front wheel. And the last bolt is for the bracket right over here. Put that in here. There we go. We got the washer on the back end. And then we've got the nut. Okay, now our axle nut is still loose. We're gonna go ahead, grab our size 32 socket and the torque wrench, and we'll go ahead and torque this down. And there it is. All right. Now in my case, because I do have the axle sliders, this is just an added step on my end. I'm gonna go ahead and put these guys on there and get my axle sliders back on. And that is it. The front wheel is back on and we are ready to go for another ride. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell for future videos with the R6. Thanks for watching, guys. Into the next one.